Today we are out doing some bird photography and I'm continuing my quest to see whether I can find a lens that will offer me the opportunity to do some bird photography just for fun at a reasonable enough price. Now if you're new to the channel, just bring you up to speed. Basically, ever since I've tested out the Canon RF 100-500 to uh, in the middle of last year, I've had a hankering to do bird photography, which is a genre of photography that I've never really delved into before. But I got that lens, I really enjoyed it. Uh, but at the same time, that lens is three grand here in the UK. 3K is far too much of a whack for me to invest into something that is literally, that is a bit of fun. So I've been testing out a range of Canon RF lenses over the last 12 months. And I've now got my hands on the Canon 100 to 400 millimeter. And at 650 pounds, this is much more manageable on the pocket. But still, you know, 650 pounds is not cheap. And so it's got a lot to live up to if I'm gonna spend 650 pounds on this lens. So this is always the case when I'm doing these uh, lens reviews. Uh, for some bird photography, I'm just down at my local water park, full of um, city birds that are muggy. You give them half a chance. quite a lot of dragonfly activity this morning. Uh, some big ones as far as dragonflies go as well. Um, so I'm just giving a little test out how this RF 100 to 400 millimeters can cope with uh, the tiniest of subjects as they flit around. I'm just waiting for them to get quite close uh, because at any kind of distance, this really doesn't latch on at all. But once they get quite close, uh, it seems to be doing not a bad job. morning the sun hasn't fully risen over the canopy of trees um, that surround the water park yet so right now I'm shooting in quite dim light and because of the fixed aperture of this lens at 400 millimeters uh, this Canon RF 100 to 400 uh, is limited to an aperture of f8 so that is quite restrictive with the light and for these bigger birds uh, we're shooting at around 1250th per second some of the smaller birds, one two five hundredth of a second. And with that limiting aperture, even though there's good light today, because it is a little bit still in shadow here behind me, that is pushing up the ISO to 12,800 and 25,600 on a couple of occasions, especially when I'm shooting into the undergrowth. And whilst the Canon R6 does handle high ISO really, really well, it's still not where I'd like to be shooting. You're still losing some of those colours, some of that vibrancy, um, and some of the detail from your shot, even with a camera as great as this Canon R6 is. Now the other consideration with this f8 aperture on this 400 millimeter lens is its ability to knock out of focus the stuff in the background that you don't want and in a busy place like this where there's just lots going on all over the place and um, having that is really useful as you might not necessarily get a nice clean background behind your subject and the f8 of 400 millimeters i'm finding that is the problem unless the subject is fairly close to me, I'm cl fairly close to the subject, but really knock the back out of focus. So you get quite a lot of distractions within 
your photograph behind and in front of your subject. Well, that lens has now gone back to Canon UK. Thanks very much for loaning it to me. Uh, I had a good play around with that shot on a few more occasions. Um, and uh, yeah, I found the lens to be typically all right. In fact, for the money, I'd go as far as to say um, it is probably on the better side of all right. Uh, the downsides of the lens for me were that uh, sharpness and image quality was great in the center of the frame. I did find that it just softened out a little bit towards the edges of the frame. We kind of intimated towards in the in the on-location part of the video there. And that FA constant aperture in a busy location, you have to work on your composition a little bit more. Um, 5.6, you know, even that one stop would be better. And that would also help with um, the, the light and getting more light in. I think once the camera goes above really 10,000, uh, 12,800, um, you definitely, definitely, definitely know it's a bulb. I mean, those are super high ISO numbers though. We couldn't have done that five years ago. It's not weather sealed. It doesn't come with a lens hood or a lens collar, but it's lightweight enough that it doesn't really need a lens collar. And let's face it, Canon can refuse to give you a little piece of plastic for your lens unless you're spending a grand plus. Um, weather sealing and say non-existent, but it's not an L lens, so that shouldn't come as any surprise to anybody. Uh, the plus sides are, it is lightweight. It is relatively, I use the word relatively, compared to other lenses, it is relatively cheap. It focuses pretty quick, if not the snappiest focusing lens I've ever used, it's still pretty quick. It stays locked on. Image sharpness in the center of the image is very good. Image stabilization is very good. Um, and overall, uh, it was just a good, all around lens to use. Uh, I think that is what I would say to it, is if you are a dedicated bird photographer, a dedicated wildlife photographer, if your aspiration is to get published in National Geographic, then this probably isn't the lens for you. But for somebody like me who is looking for a lens that can go out and do bird photography, but also might couple up to throw into my landscape photography bag as well, then um, think for the price, which instantly you can head down into the description below to find some links through to Amazon um, and see the latest price of it on there, which you know, Canon lenses fluctuate all the time. But I think for the price, it could actually be a bit of a no brainer for the type of photography that I would want to do with it. Uh, but if you are considering buying a Canon RF lens for bird photography, then check out this playlist here. Um, which is all of my reviews of the Canon RF lenses um, for this type of photography. You'll be able to see what the competition is for this Canon RF 100 to 400 millimeters. That's it from me. So I'll see you on the next one pretty soon.